That's not the opening to the Tchaikovsky Piano Concerto. Play, play, play it like it's supposed to be played. Well, it is in the posthumous version, but the version that we will play this week here in Atlanta is Tchaikovsky's own version, and this is what Tchaikovsky wrote and then conducted and heard played back to him. So it's not those block chords that we're it's so used to. It's not the Soviet bombs. It's <laughs> <laughs> How did you come across this original version? What's the story? Well, I was interested in a uh, particular detail in the second movement of the concerto uh, once in a discussion, and so I decided to write to the Tchaikovsky Museum and Archive in, in Russia, and I got an answer to that small detail that, uh, that was in question, but then I was told, well, this, all, all of this and more will be described in our forthcoming Urtext edition of the first piano concerto of Tchaikovsky. And growing up, I knew uh, that there were a couple different versions, but it was quite murky. The situation was unclear with these uh, different versions, and the situation was unclear, in fact, until 2015, when this uh, scholarly uh, researched edition of the first concerto appeared. And, um, and finally, now we have the text where uh, they have been able to separate the editorial meddlings that became the posthumous version, the version that we're so used to hearing, and the version that Tchaikovsky himself conducted from 1879, when he put the finishing touches on his concerto, so to say, until 1893, the legendary concert when he premiered the Sixth Symphony, the Pathétique, eight days before he passed away. In the same program, he conducted the first piano concerto, and the edition that we're using is actually, to a large extent, based on Tchaikovsky's own conducting score with his own markings huh. from that last public concert. So in that sense, it is taken as the last known intentions of Tchaikovsky regard regarding his, uh, by now, legendary first piano concerto. So in addition to not playing block chords at the beginning, arpeggiating the beginning, there are, I'm sure, many other little felicities. Are there one or two things that we will notice in these performances? Absolutely. Well, as you mentioned, the striking difference in the beginning, and it's not just that the chords are a bit softer and that the second and third is always uh, rolled, but what's important is what it does to the melody in the, in the orchestra, because uh. it has a chance to be more flexible, more lyrical. Finally, the marking that the strings have mezzo forte, so in, in normal spoken voice and not uh, the usual shouting. So it all comes together and is much more um, fitting to a lyrical image of this uh, concerto. And uh, there are a number of uh, small details. We have fresh orchestral parts with uh, a different accent here and a, and a slur there that's been overlooked for a long time. So I think it's a bit like comparing it to a painting that has un undergone a restoration in a museum. So all of a sudden you see that the colors are brighter and different than uh -huh. what you're used to. In the second movement, for example, this middle section is usually marked prestissimo in the posthumous edition. This <laughs> generations of uh, piano students who try to get it as fast as possible. And then you come to this uh, quote of, uh, of a waltz that he was fond of, a, a French or Belgian waltz. <laughs> so when the previous section is played prestissimo, this sounds like cartoon, cartoon music. music that? Yeah. Very Bugs but, Bunny. <laughs> but then you find out that actually in Tchaikovsky's score, uh, in a much more normal way, it says Allegro Vivace, so perhaps the thing, the, the guiding tempo of the walls. It's still virtuoso music, yes, but it doesn't but, sound hectic. And it also is not only virtuosic, but has a musical content that I think is clearer. And um, in the third movement, something we can't illustrate without the orchestra, there is about 45, uh, 50 seconds of uh, music that's traditionally cut in the, in the slower middle part of the third movement, this, this music. And 
I was always surprised by this change that, that Tchaikovsky makes in the third movement. You have the main material and it goes into this slower and different mood and practically doesn't stay there. And a moment later, you're back to the, huh. to the previous material. So it's, it always seemed like, is this a miscalculation uh, compositionally? But in fact, this section is, is makes much it all longer. Makes sense. And so the middle of the movement has its own weight and the architecture of the movement is, uh, is therefore also um, more balanced. And then there are things that uh, might be superficially brilliant that, that, that uh, were changed pianistically, but musically it loses. For example, the famous last octaves before the, before the um, fi final return of the theme in the, in the third movement. Normally you have... <laughs> so you have these jumps and then you have a grand fermata, everybody looks around and then... <laughs> In fact, in Tchaikovsky, it's this. Mm. So it goes straight into this ecstatic uh, final repetition of the, of the theme. And essentially, it is in octaves, because yes, it's a virtuoso piano concerto, but essentially it's a vocal trill. <laughs> So, so you have um, the composer himself obviously has a, makes a better marriage of the virtuosic and in some way athletic instrumentalism, but musical content and reference to very traditional uh, uh, musical models. Of, so you have this vocal trill that a singer might do in the 19th century bel canto opera and then finally bursts into this uh, glorious melody. So, these kinds of uh, changes, and somebody might ask, well, how significant is that? There's not that many notes different, but psychologically it paints a different, different portrait of the, of the piece, and I find in some ways a kinder, gentler, quirkier face than, uh, than maybe what we're used to in this wonderful uh, masterpiece that continues to give after so many repetitions, so many performances, but uh, it maintains uh, a freshness and has that richness that, uh, that I think makes it the, the popular concerto that it is. Kirill, thank you. And as they say where you come from, as a token of good luck for your performance, Nipuha Nipira. Certo. <laughs>